Welcome to the first lesson of Unit 3, which is on the Pythagorean Theorem and Perimeter and Area of Composite Figures. The Pythagorean Theorem you were introduced to in Grade 7 and 8, so this will be a review, hopefully. Um, if not, you'll learn it today. The Pythagorean Theorem is named after the Greek philosopher and mathematician Pythagoras. Although ancient texts indicate that different civilizations understood this property of right triangles, Pythagoras proved that it applies to all right triangles. Remember that a right triangle has that angle 90 degrees. We indicate the angle 90 degree with um, a square. So 90 degree angle is essential in a right triangle in order to apply the Pythagorean theorem. If your triangle does not have a right angle in it, you cannot use the Pythagorean theorem. In a right triangle, the square of the length of the hypotenuse, so this is the hypotenuse, C. When you square C, that value is equal to the other two sides, A and B, squared and added together. This is the formula that we use for the Pythagorean theorem. A squared plus B squared is equal to C squared. You can also write it the other way. C squared is equal to A squared plus B squared. It doesn't really matter which side of the equal sign C is squared is on, as long as A squared and B squared are on one side and they're being added together, and then C squared is on the other. So remember that the hypotenuse is always the longest side. So it's always going to be C. Always, always, always variable C. It's also always opposite to the right angle. So here's our right angle again. I know this because it is indicated with that square and opposite to that angle is side length C, which is our hypotenuse. We call the other two sides of the, of the triangle legs. Let's practice applying the Pythagorean theorem. In A and B, we're trying to determine the unknown side length. So in A, we're trying to find C. And now C is opposite to the right angle. So this is our hypotenuse. I'll just put HYP for short. The other two sides are our legs. I can label this side as A and this side as B. It doesn't really matter which side is A and B. All that's essential is that side C is always your hypotenuse. I'm going to start off with writing out the formula for Pythagorean theorem. And then my next line, I'm going to substitute all the given values. I know that A is equal to 12. So I'm going to replace A with 12. And I know that B is 9. So I'm going to replace B with 9. And I'm trying to find C. So I'm going to leave C as C. And following bed mass, I'm going to simplify 12 squared and 9 squared before I add them together. 12 squared is 144 plus 9 squared is 81. Now I can add 144 and 81 together. We're still trying to find the value of C. Right now, we know that the value of C squared is 225, but I wanna know what C is. I need to get rid of this exponent two. The opposite of squaring is square rooting. So when I bring that two over to the other side, it's gonna become its opposite operation, which is square rooting. The next line will be the square root of 225 is equal to C. 
And the square root of 225 is 15. So that's the value of C, our hypotenuse. Therefore, the length of side C is 15. And then I'm going to include my units. My units is meters. Next, B, we're trying to find Y. Now, first I'm gonna locate my hypotenuse side. So I'm going to start at the right angle and then go acro directly across. So this side is my hypotenuse. So my hypotenuse is 13 centimeters long. Now my other two sides are A and B. Again, it doesn't matter how you label it. So I'm gonna label this as A, and this is gonna be side B. And I always start off by writing out my formula. Next, I'm going to input everything that I know. I'm trying to find A, which I'm going to replace the variable A with Y because that's the variable that was given to me in the question. And then we're squaring that. And then B has a value of five and C has a value of 13. Now I'm going to simplify five squared and 13 squared. And now I'm going to bring 25 over to the other side. Now when I bring positive 25 to the other side, it's going to become its opposite operation, negative. And simplifying my right side to 144. And now I'm going to bring my squared operation to the other side, and the opposite of squaring is square rooting. So the value of y is 12. Therefore, the length of side y is 12 centimeters. Page two. This is a word problem uh, that includes the Pythagorean theorem in it. A 14 foot ladder is placed six feet away from a wall. The distance from the ground straight up to the top of the wall is 13 feet. Will the ladder reach the top of the wall? I'm gonna read this question again. And this time I'm going to identify the information provided to me in, in words, where I can locate it in the diagram. A 14 foot ladder. Here's my 14 foot ladder. It's already labeled 14 feet. It's placed six feet away from the wall. So my wall is in gray and the ladder is placed six feet away from the wall. The distance from the ground straight up to the top of the wall is 13 feet. So the wall is 13 feet high. I'm gonna label that as 13 feet. Will the ladder reach the top of the wall? In the diagram, it looks like the ladder doesn't reach the top of the wall. The ladder ends here and the wall ends here. But we just need to confirm that this ladder actually doesn't reach the top of the wall. So we're gonna perform the Pythagorean theorem. We actually have a triangle here. If I just draw in my right angle here, this is actually a right triangle. Remember that um, directly opposite to the right angle is side C. So side C is our hypotenuse and it's 14 feet. We know that um, the other two legs of the triangle, A and B, uh, we can interchange them. I'm going to just label this side as A. Side A is six feet long. And now we're trying to find side B. 
we know that the entire wall length is 13 feet, but we don't know how tall the wall length is from the ground to where the ladder ends. So that we're gonna label it as side B. Now, if side B ends up being 13 feet, then that's the same as the entire wall length, and then we know that the ladder reaches the top of the wall. If it's under 13 feet, then we know that the ladder actually doesn't make it to the top of the wall. As always, I'm going to begin with my formula. I'm going to input all the information that I'm given. I know A is 6, B we're trying to find, C is 14. Squaring 6, squaring 14, and then beginning to isolate for B. And then bringing my squared to the other side and it becoming square root. I'm rounding it to one decimal place. So now we see that B is equal to 12.6 feet, which is less than 13 feet, which is the entire wall length. So since the wall is 13 feet and the ladder only reaches 12.6 feet, then we know that the ladder doesn't reach the top of the wall. There are some questions here at the bottom for you to try in the workbook PDF that's attached. Perimeter and area of composite figures. A composite figure is made up of more than one simple shape. Simple shapes are squares, triangles, circles, rectangles. These are simple shapes and composite figures are when you combine two or more of these shapes. So maybe a triangle and a rectangle together. This is a composite figure. To determine the perimeter of a composite figure, we still add all of the side lengths uh, together. Uh, and then for area, you would find the area of each individual simple shape and then just add them all together. So here, I'm going to split this up into simple shapes. So now we have a rectangle and a right triangle. We can actually use the Pythagorean theorem. So remember when finding the perimeter of any shape, we're just adding up all the sides. We know that this side here is 12 centimeters. We know that this side here is 14 centimeters. We are also given that this entire side here is 22 centimeters. What we're missing is this side right here. We just learned about the Pythagorean theorem. So what we can do is use it to find side C. We know that this is the longest side of the right triangle. It's also opposite to the right angle. So this is our hypotenuse. Okay, so this side, this side here is the same side length as this side. So we know that this is 12 centimeters. We know that this side is going to be 22, which is the entire side highlighted in pink, subtract 14, which is uh, the side highlighted in green, which is equal to eight centimeters. So we have side A and B. Now we can use that to find side C. beginning with my Pythagorean theorem formula. I'm going to input all the information that I'm given. C 
simplifying 8 squared and simplifying 12 squared. And adding 64 and 144. And then bringing the square to the other side. The square root of 208 is approximately 14.4. So now we know that side C is 14.4 centimeters. Now we can actually find the perimeter of this composite figure. Now that we have all the side lengths, we can just add them up. Therefore, the perimeter of this composite figure is 62.4 centimeters. This formula sheet is attached on our Google Classroom for you to use. The next question, we have a semicircle. And so we're going to use the perimeter of a semicircle, which we actually call a circumference. Um, so we use the word perimeter for every other shape, but when we're trying to find the perimeter of a circle, we actually call it circumference. So basically when you're looking on the formula sheet under perimeter, you scroll down to circle, you'll see that it says C is equal to pi times diameter or c is equal to 2 pi times radius that c stands for circumference okay and so the diameter is the distance from one end of the circle to the other and the radius is always half the diameter in this question we have a rectangle and a semicircle so we're going to use the circumference formula to find the perimeter of the semicircle. Since this side is 12 millimeters, that means that this side length is also 12 millimeters. This is actually the diameter of our circle. If we extended this semicircle to a full circle, it would look like this. Remember that the diameter is the length from one end of the circle to the other, which is exactly what's highlighted here at this dotted line is the diameter of a full circle. And remember that the circumference of a circle is equal to C is equal to pi times diameter. Now all we have to do is divide this formula by two because this is only half a circle in this composite figure. C is equal to pi times diameter divided by two. C is equal to pi times the diameter is 12 divided by two. I'm going to simplify my numerator, pi times 12, using the pi button on my scientific calculator. And then I'm going to divide it by 2 because it's only a semicircle. And then in step 2, we would find the perimeter of our composite figure. Remember that perimeter is all of the exterior sides added up. So we're going to add up this side because this is an exterior side. Then we're going to add this side 
and this side, which will both be 24 millimeters. And then we just found this circumference, the circumference of half a circle, which we found was 18.9 millimeters. So 18.9 plus 24 plus 24 plus 12. All exterior sides is equal to 78.9 millimeters. Therefore, the perimeter of this composite figure is 78.9 millimeters. Let's practice determining the area of composite figures now. Remember that the area is everything inside of a shape or figure. You'll see here that we're using the same two composite figures that we just found the perimeter for, but this time we're finding the area, the space inside the figure. We're going to use the same method though. First, we're going to divide our composite figure into simple shapes. Okay, so we have a rectangle and we have a right triangle. And uh, on the previous page, we determined that this side length was eight centimeters. So we're going to find the area of the rectangle and then the area of the triangle separately. And then we can add them together to, to find the total area of this composite figure. So area one, the rectangle. We know that the area of a rectangle is equal to length times width. Length times width. Area is equal to the length of the rectangle is 14 centimeters. And the width is 12. 14 times 12 is 168. And remember that area, you have to square your units. Next, the area of the triangle. The area of the triangle formula can be found on the formula sheet attached, and it is base times height divided by two. It can also be written as one over two base times height but it means the same thing. One over two times base times height is the same thing as saying base times height, both divided by two. Area is equal to the base of our triangle and the height is this side, which is also 12 centimeters. Your base and your height are always the two angles that meet at the 90 degree angle. So you're not using your hypotenuse side, you're using the other two sides of a right triangle. Simplifying my numerator, eight times 12 is 96 divided by two which is 48 squared centimeters. So we found the individual simple shape areas, and now to determine the area of the composite figure, we're going to add them together. So 
So the total area is equal to the area of our rectangle plus the area of our triangle, which is 216 squared centimeters. Therefore, the area of the composite figure is 216 squared centimeters. And let's find the area of composite figure B. So first we're gonna find the area of the rectangle. Area of a rectangle is length times width. Length times width. Two hundred and eighty-eight millimeters squared. Next, we're going to find the area of the semicircle. The area of a circle can be found on the formula sheet attached. The area of a circle is equal to pi r squared. Since this is a semicircle, I'm going to divide my formula by two. Now remember, radius is half the diameter. The diameter of the circle is the dotted line here. Our diameter is equal to 12 millimeters. So to find the radius, we're just gonna take our diameter and divide it by two. Area is equal to pi times six squared divided by two. Following bed mass, I'm going to simplify six squared before multiplying it by pi Pi times 36 is 113.1 divided by 2 is equal to 56.6 millimeters squared. To find the total area, I'm going to add them together. Therefore, the area of the composite figure is 344.6 millimeters squared. Sometimes you have composite figures where you're not trying to find the entire area, but just part of it. So shaded versus unshaded areas. Let's determine the area of just the shaded region of figure A. So we're going to find the area of the entire large circle first. So we're going to find the area of everything first. Then we're going to find the area of the unshaded circle. Then we'll subtract the two in order just to find the area of the shaded region. So step one, area of entire large circle. Area is equal to pi r squared. The radius of the large circle is given to us 14 centimeters. So area is equal to pi 14 squared. 14 squared is 196. 196 times pi is equal to approximately 615.8 centimeters squared.
Step two, area of smaller unshaded circle. Using the same formula because it is still a circle, this time our radius is seven. Area is equal to pi times seven squared. Seven squared is 49. And 49 times pi is approximately 153.9 squared centimeters. So now we're going to subtract the two in order to get just the shaded region of our circle. Area is equal to area one subtract area two. Area is equal to 615.8 subtract 153.9, which is equal to 461.9 squared centimeters. So therefore the area of the shaded region is 461.9 squared centimeters. Lastly, we have these rectangles that are together to create a composite figure and it has an unshaded square in the middle. So we're trying to find just the shaded region so what we can do is we can find the, the unshaded square first, find the area of this unshaded square first, then we can subtract it from the area of the shaded region. So the area of the unshaded square is, you can use length times width, but because this is a square, all sides are the same, I can actually just say area is equal to side squared. Area is equal to two squared. Area is equal to four centimeters squared. I'm gonna separate my composite figure into two rectangles. So I'm gonna find the area of this entire rectangle, including the unshaded square, then I'm going to subtract the unshaded square from it later. Area of a rectangle is length times width. The length of this rectangle is five, and the width we actually just need to determine is this section right here. So this entire side is equal to 10 centimeters, and this entire side is equal to seven centimeters. Just to find this side length right here, I'm gonna take my 10, Subtract seven from it. So this little side length is equal to three centimeters. Area is equal to five times three, which is 15 squared centimeters. And finally, we'll find the area of this rectangle. Area is equal to length times width. I'm 
The length of this rectangle is 7 and the width is 3. Area is equal to 21 squared centimeters. Now, to find the area of the shaded region, we are going to add the rectangle 2 and rectangle 3 together, and we're going to subtract square 1 from it, just to get the shaded region only. So the total area is equal to area 2 plus area 3, and then we're going to take area 1 away from it. So the total area is equal to 32 squared centimeters. Another place to locate perimeter and area formulas is directly in the workbook on page three. There are also some homework questions here for you to try so that you can consolidate today's learning. Great job today.